Okay. Good morning and good evening. I am Dr. P. Y. Cho and my colleagues, uh, Dr. Junior Tu. We both will moderate this webinar together. Welcome to ICC webinar today. Today, we are so honored to learn from Dr. Jun Wu Jong's presentation. Uh, Dr. Jong completed his fellowship in Department of Plastic Surgery, Seoul National University, Bandan Hospital, and earned a PhD degree at the Seoul National University College of the Medicine Graduate School. Dr. Jong has been the active member in several society, such as the Korean Society of PIS, Korean Society of Aesthetic Surgery, ISOPS, Korean Academic Association of the Rhinoplasty and the Maslow Facial Surgery. Dr. John focuses himself on contour surgery, rhinoplasty, nose revision surgery, and the soft tissue surgeries. In recent years, Dr. John has been invited to give the lectures in Asia to share his personal experiences. Last month, big congratulations that he started to own his the private clinic in Seoul, DL, Dream Life Plastic Surgery Clinic. The today topic is the facial contouring surgery considering heart and soft tissues. Two good friends are invited to the panel. The one is Dr. Yoshi Hadori from Japan and Dr. Alan Yan from New York. So let's welcome Dr. Jingwu Jones' presentation. Please. Thank you for kind introducing. Uh, good afternoon and good morning in America, uh, dear colleagues and respected professors. Uh, I am Dr. Jinuk Jung from DL Plastic Surgery Clinic in Seoul, Korea. It is an honor to be able to share my knowledge and experience in this international webinar. First and foremost, I'd like to express my gratitude to everyone who has joined today. And I want to extend a special thanks to professors of Jangung Hospital for providing me this opportunity and to my friend, Prof. Peng Yun Cho, as well. My presenting topic today revolves around my observation during facial contouring surgery. Uh, recently, I've come to believe that considering not only the heart tissue, especially bones, but also the soft tissue contribution and reflection after surgery is essential to achieve more satisfying results. Uh, I'm still in progress of advancing, so I'd like to discuss my recent contemplations on this matter together. Uh, firstly, I will present the concepts and methods involved the, in the facial bone contouring surgery that I'm performing. And second, I will be discussing how considering both hard and soft tissue aspect can enhance final outcomes and patient satisfaction. Uh, introduction, and until now, the facial contouring surgery we've been considering is mainly focused on the shaping the facial bone contour to achieve a slimmer appearance. However, when contemplating facial contouring surgery on a broader scale, uh, it should involve not only the bones, but also encompass the management of soft tissues. Therefore, uh, there are several important things to prepare and consider when planning for facial contouring surgery, uh, which is first, uh, understanding the overall balance and proportion of the face. And second, the evaluation of the shape and anatomy of facial bone. Lastly, uh, the often overlooked aspect is understanding the contribution of overlying soft tissue. As following, surgeons should first understand individual characteristics of this face. Uh, the planning aimed at achieving ideal facial proportions is referred to as uh, propylaplasty. While facial bone contouring surgery playing a significant role within it, but uh, considering the three-dimensional aspect and proportion of the face. Sometimes uh, rhinoplasty and soft tissue volume augmentation surgery are planned alongside with bone surgery. For facial bone analysis, which is needed for precise surgical plan to consider individual characteristics, 
spatial index, which is spatial width to height proportion, gyrion to gyrion to conion to conion proportion, and overall proportion and asymmetry of bone. For side view, facial convexity and maxillomandibular complex relationship is considered. Based on analysis of each patient characteristics, the design of steatomy lines and surgical plan can vary. For example, in the left side case, if the patient face is wide and short, as many Asian shows, the mandible osteotomy line would be elevated in angular portion, and the chin would be advanced or narrowing. For reducing width of the face, an osteotomy and setback procedure for the cheekbone might be necessary. In the right side case, is the opposite of the left one, where the face is narrow and long. The mandible osteotomy line would not be elevated in the angular portion, and chin would be shortened or reduced without excessive narrowing. For the cheekbone, to prevent the facial proportion from being elongated, a rotation procedure is performed to achieve a suitable of soft, uh, subtle softening of the prominent area and maintain the malar height volume, uh, malar highlight point. This is the CT scan of after surgery. The surgery was well performed according to pre op analysis of each patient. This is the photo of before and after patient above. These, pa these two patients are transgenders and performing series of facial feminine surgery. Uh, facial point contour surgery appears to be a powerful tool that can alter not only the bones, but also the overall image. Furthermore, uh, in considering propyloplasty, I performed rhinoplasty, perinatal implant, and fat injection surgery in the same time. Soft tissue contribution and changes after surgery is another important factor that closely related with post-op satisfaction of the result. Uh, in our practice, we usually focus on our bone surgery. There's a tendency to estimate outcomes related to only bones and x-rays. However, when considering patient satisfaction, they found us to enhance their overall facial appearance, including the soft tissue, not only bones. And that is what patients really desire. So analyzing soft tissue factors and managing uh, the changes after surgery have become getting important. Therefore, in aesthetic facial contouring surgery, a broad approach includes uh, soft tissue contouring surgery. <clears throat> Let's look at the more details of uh, bone contouring surgery first about melaplasty, mandibuloplasty, genioplasty, and then about soft tissue contouring management. And uh, while uh, aesthetic also great surgery is also important, but today's discussion will be focused on contouring surgery. Let's begin with melaplasty. Uh, prominent cheekbones are considered attractive and useful in Western. However, in Eastern, it is associated with assertiveness and masculinity. It is because the divergence and width of the face. The prominent amount and shape is also different among Asian countries. Uh, Northern country, Asian as Mongolia and Korea, melanin facial shape tend to have more prominent and square shape. But toward the Southern Asia as Malaysia and Indonesia tend to have less prominent and overall over shape. In pre op analysis, 45 degree and lateral comp component of gigomatic protrusion and facial width, width should be evaluated. The surgical method is performed differently depending on its characteristics and types. Melaplasty has evolved from reduction concept to reposition concept. The current approach uh, predom predominantly used is three-dimensional repositioning of cheekbone rather than two-dimensional reduction in bijigmatic width. We perform surgery to reposition the cheekbone to its uh, most ideal location in their dimension. Uh, the incision usually utilizes intraoral and preauricular approach, while osteotomies are conducted in an L-shaped manner. This concept of modern melaplasty allows surgery to be performed customized depending on the individual characteristics. 
the above concept should be applied differently depending on the patient. This patient has a protruding lateral side cheekbone only. So the lateral reduction by rotation was performed to reduce the lateral side cheekbone. In this patient, uh, maxilla, max, uh, maximal mella projection point presented in 45 degree area. Therefore, to reduce the volume of this area, separate procedures was performed and overall reduction were done together. L osteotomy can be varied by amount of osteotomy and its inclination level, which affect the reduction volume and area. This patient has a large and wide cheekbone overall. Therefore, a three to four millimeter osteotomy was performed to reduce size of the body volume. The inclination of osteotomy level also can affect to the reduction area. The high osteotomy line near the optal limb can reduce more upper lateral volume. The next is about mandibular plasty. Asians tend to have wide and prominent jawline, which are considered unattractive and masculine appearance. Moreover, who have prominent mandible, uh, mandible are likely to have wide and flat chin also. Therefore, to creating a slim and attractive face, reducing the width of chin and modifying its shape are concomitant. The pre-op analysis involves assessing the proportion and index from the frontal view and mandible analysis from lateral view. Mandibuloplasty has evolved from mandible angulectomy and gradually developed to contouring of the total mandible shape as the desire for balance and aesthetic jawline. Therefore, not only mandible reduction, but also combined with narrowing chin portion have been made to reduce the whole lower face more slimmer and aesthetically pleasing. Nowadays, many surgeons recognize the importance of reducing the mandible as a whole, which mandible reduction was extended from angular portion to chin area as extended long curve osteotomy or combining it with uh, narrow engineer plasty. And also sagittal resection or cortical burning to reduce uh, body volume. This is a patient who performed long curved osteotomy extended to lateral chin portion and sagittal resection to reduce lateral cortical volume. When playing the osteotomy line, uh, it is recommended to make the line not too straight and not too elevated, but form a smooth curved line and leave enough distance from ear lobule. This is the photo of a patient before and six months after surgery. Leaving 1.5 finger breast distance from ear lobule to gonion is preferred to prevent hollowness and give natural look after surgery. An extended long curve osteotomy uh, extend to osteotomy line from long curve osteotomy to the parasympathesis and mental tubercle of anterior chin. The advantage of this method lies in being able to reduce uh, in a single step, eliminating the, the needs of additional fixation. This patient has uh, asymmetry in the low jaw and chin. With the left side, uh, being larger than right side. Therefore, on the left side, exten extended long curve osteotomy was utilized to elongate the line toward the anterior chin area. On the right side, long curve osteotomy was used to reduce it up to the lateral chin area, thus improving the asymmetry of the patient. There are two methods which can reduce anterior chin width. The other one is extended long curved osteotomy method, which will remove it in one piece from angle to chin. The advantage is that 
there has no plate fixation and less chance to control irregularity. The below is long cobbled osteotomy with narrowing junior plasty, which called V line surgery. The advantage is that the chin segment can be repositioned to the desired position after T shaped osteotomy. When comparing to method, T osteotomy has the advantage of narrowing movement and repositioning of the bone segment. However, it might have a more control irregularity or potential bone resorption. The use of fixation pins become essential in this method. Extended long curve osteotomy, which elongate line toward the tubercle for reducing chin width, there is a potential issue of detaching the periosteum and muscles, which attach it in the lower border of the bone, along the <clears throat> possibility of nerve traction injuries also. However, it also has the advantage of shorter advantage, uh, shorter average surgical time and the ability to achieve a more amount of volume reduction. Therefore, t appears to be more useful in case where the chin is wide with short word receded, while uh, ELCO seems beneficial in situation where the chin is wide with long or exhibit uh, asymmetry. Currently, uh, the V-line surgery using the t method is widely used and is effective for various types of chin shapes. It can control the width of chin according to the front end view and also vertical length and AP position according to the proportion and lateral pro profile. Neuroengineer plasty can be designed in various ways, like inverted V-shape, T-shape, Y-shape, depending on the in inferior alveolar canal and length of the chin. The chin is a critical component of facial aesthetics and harmony. The detailed preference may differ from nation to nation, male to female, and race to race. Therefore, if chin is too wide, or retrognatia, or prognatia, or short or long, concomitant genoplasty is recommended. Chin position is often associated with the relationship between upper and low jaws and can be uh, linked to occlusion malformation. Meanwhile, shape can be buried on the anterior posterior relationship and vertical lengths. To achieve ideal chin shape, it is essential to reposition the chin to an ideal location. However, without considering the resultant change in sub tissue and considering uh, following deformity, creating the ideal chin shape can be challenging. Genoplasty can be applied in various ways, depending on the shape of the chin, and each method uh, results in different changes in soft tissues. Additionally, the amount of bone movement and removal can lead to various soft tissue deformity. Let's go through the changes in soft tissue corresponding to each method and explore the consideration uh, regarding bone movement and removal for each technique in sequence. Uh, firstly, neurogenoplasty is performed to create a slimmer, more feminine appearance in the lower face. The common use t osteotomy allows for the uh, adjustment of the amount gathered by removing the center segment. And its simultaneous mobility enables its application to various types of chin. Lateral junior plasty involves con considering not only the volume of the lateral chin, but also the patient profile and soft tissue condition. In case of small and retreated chin, the central reduction amount is minimal and advance is if needed. Uh, uh, conversely, uh, if the chin is prominent and protruded and central reduction amount is increased and vertical reduction may be necessary if needed. Uh, the inverted V osteotomy is a variation of the T osteotomy that enables the adjustment of angle to simultaneously reduce both width and length. For this patient, V-line surgery was conducted with T osteotomy, reducing center segment about seven millimeters 
and setback reposition about two millimeters. Theostectomy is uh, beneficial to make a chin uh, advance or setback at the same time. It can help to have more options for such a plan and then uh, extended long curve osteotomy method. In this photo, uh, this is the photo of, of a patient. Her broad lower face and prominent jawline was improved to be more balanced and attractive. Advancement genioplasty is performed on patient with a small or receded chin. Characteristics of patient with retrognosia uh, typically include a receded mentum and shallow labial metafold, tension in the uh, opicularis oris and mentalis muscle upon uh, closing the mouth, and an obtuse cervical, cervical mental angle. After performing an advancement genioplasty, the average sub-tissue change typically range of, of around 1 to uh, 0 0.85. Um, this procedure tend to deepen the labial mental fold and reduce the cervical mental angle. If there is a tension in the muscles around the mouth and at the tip of the chin, uh, it's it is advisable not to extensively develop the you know, inferior border borders to allow uh, both the lateral chin and soft tissue mentum to be pulled up together. Furthermore, when the chin advancement, the submental muscles also advance. The digastric and geniohyoid muscle pull up hyoid bone forward, reducing the subcomental mental angle. Additionally, the genioglos muscle advances the base of the tongue can reduce tongue pressure, aim, aiding in maintaining air patency. Now, this patient who undergoes sliding genoplasty and some mental liposuction experienced an improvement uh, in the lateral profile along the enhancement in subco mental angle. Separate genoplasty is considered when the position of the mandible is normal, but uh, only the anterior chin and mental tubercle is protruded. After setback genioplasty, the soft tissue changes typically average around 1 to 0 0.52, uh, showing a less uh, pronounced effect compared to above procedures. This can result in flattening of the labial mental fold and an increased mental soft tissue. Additionally, if there's a accompanying mandible progressism, it might lead to aesthetically uh, undesirable outcomes. Therefore, setback genoplasty should be performed with, um, with a narrow indication. Restricted to cases where there is a deep labor mental fold, absence of mandibular progressism, absence of six of tissue chin pad, and only apparent protrusion of the mental tubercle. Um, it is already visible to proceed with minimal intervention in these specific cases. Vertical reduction genoplasty is performed to reduce the vertical length of the chin. When the reduction amount is minimal, it can be achieved through inverted V-line, uh, V-osteotomy, and typically a uh, sandwich osteotomy horizontal osteotomy is performed. And in certain cases, uh, inferior border osteotomy may also be possible. Sandwich osteotomy involves horizontally removing the middle portion of the bone. In case where the chin is elongated, it is common for the anterior loop of the uh, inferior eyebrow lobe to extend it downward. Therefore, Angulating the osteotomy according to the nerve path would be a safe approach. This is the patient has an elongated and long chin, and you can observe them uh, exerting force on the chin tip and lips to close their mouth. Sandwich osteotomy was performed along with advancement to prevent chin toshis and improve their lateral profile. 
before surgery, there was a tension observed in the mentalis and obicularis oris muscles. We performed redu reducing along with advancement, pulling and fixing the periosteum, uh, repairing the mentalis. As a result, there is an improvement in the low lip tension and chin tosis. The lip appear more relaxed and comfortable. Here are the CT image before and after surgery showing uh, approximately an eight millimeter vertical reduction and three millimeters uh, ad advancement. In patients with elongated and wide chins, uh, it is possible to perform neuroingenioplasty uh, in conduction with sandwich osteotomy. Inferior border osteotomy involves, involves resetting the lower border of the mandible, including lower border of the chin. This method has uh, pros and cons. However, detaching muscles from the inferior border can lead to sagging of soft tissue or the development of double chin appearance. Moreover, removing cortical bone and exposing cancellous bone can result in oozing or hematoma. Reattachment of periosteum and muscles can take time, uh, possibly leading to adhesion in unintended area. Due to the extent of the <coughs> resection, the geniohyoid and digastric muscle may become detached. Repair and reattachment of this muscle are necessary in such cases. This patient uh, previously undergo an uh, inferior body osteotomy due to uh, elongated chin, but there has a uh, unwanted following problems. Subsequently, she experienced some mental resty, chin tosis, and upper lip tension, and chin dimpling. To address this, a uh, revision surgery involved uh, re exposing the inferior border, contouring irregular margins, and performing the chin advancement. Uh, the periosteum was tightly repositioned and secured along, the re along with reattachment of the mentalis muscle. Concurrently, uh, so mental liposuction was performed. Post-surgery, improvement, improvement were observed in some mental laxity, uh, low lip tension, and chin dimpling. Following vertical reduction, the average sub-tissue change is approximately 1 to 0 0.43, um, indicating roughly half the reduction in sub-tissue compared to the amount of bone reduction. Compared to other methods, there is a higher uh, likelihood of submental laxity, low lip, and chintosis after vertical reduction. To reduce this complication, repairing the mentalis and appreciately uh, reattaching the periosteum and platysma tightly based on the amount of reduction uh, would also be helpful. Uh, length engineoplasty is typically performed when the chin tip is short or when the more pronounced feline line is desired. In this case, where the chin is both small and short, there is a method to extend bone in wedge shape and fill the gap with the free bone graft would be possible. Another method involves using a central segment as a particle bone flap for extending during narrow engineoplasty. This is the before and after particle bone flap lengthening method. It can be beneficially used for a patient with short and wide chin. Last method can be referred to as a leaving a central bone block and extending it by obtaining the lateral segment on the top. In patients with central depression is present, uh, the length could decrease and depression remain after surgery. Performing lengthening by this method concurrently can prevent this issue. So to summarize, uh, neurogenoplasty requires consideration not only the lateral chin volume, but also the patient profile and soft tissue contribution. And advancement and lengthening result in approximately 1 to 0 0.9 change in soft tissue. Advancement can improve chin tosis, lower retention, and some laxity. 
setback and reduction resulting in approximately 1 to 0 0.5 softness changes. Uh, setback should be uh, caution, uh, cautionally performed to avoid excessive flattening of the chin. Vertical reduction may induce soft dystosis, hence reattachment and tightening of the muscle and periosteum are helpful. The next issue is about dissatisfaction after facial groin contouring surgery. Patients often express dissatisfaction after contouring surgery, which can happen due to issues during the surgery itself, or even when the surgery has been performed successfully. Why does this occur? We must consider the entire face, not just the x-rays and bone and account of soft tissue. The reason being patients seeking us not only uh, enhance their bones, but to improve their aesthetic of the internal face. Uh, absolutely, considering all these aspects is crucial in our practice as we are practice surgeon. Let's consider the possible cause of dissatisfaction after surgery together. At first, a technical issue, and second, uh, overlooking facial harmony and proportion, leading to an inappropriate surgical plan might be another cause. Uh, lightly, the contribution and reflection of the soft tissue after surgery could also play a vital role. Let's look at the cases of technical issue and subsequent complication. Well, inexperienced surgical skill, skill can cause asymmetry and uneven irregular contour. And this contour irregularity, asymmetry, and secondary angle might cause a dissatisfaction and need to be corrected. Uh, secondly, operation was conducted to achieve a smooth and even contour. Irregularity, asymmetry, and secondary angle are well corrected. Overlooking facial harmony and proportion could be another contributing factor, potentially resulting in an inappropriate surgical plan. This patient has conducted angulectomy alone. After surgery, the patient complained about secondary angle and cheek hollowness, as well as uh, disproportionately wide chin. Secondary angle and cheek hollowness can be seen in prior photo. For this patient, neurogenioplasty by theosteotomy and secondary angle contouring by border resection was performed. In the poster photo, soft transition without secondary angle can be seen and chin appears slim and balanced in front of you. Excessive bone removal and too high ostectomy or too lettering chin can break the facial balance and bring about an unnatural overdone appearance. Inadequate indication of contouring surgery can become a cause of dissatisfaction. Therefore, even if the patient wanted it, it is crucial to provide a comprehensive explanation and guide them toward a more suitable direction. When surgery is performed without considering maxillomandibular relationship and occlusion state, the effectiveness of surgery might be limited to change their facial profile and appearance. This is the patient above. He performed mandible border resection with a setback genioplasty. Even he has a long face and cholesterol profile, his maxillary mandibular relationship was not improved. Therefore, he was dissatisfied with the previous surgery. To the surgery was performed to improve the relationship of the upper and lower jaw and to shorten the length of the mid face. Clover rotation and advancement genioplasty was performed to improve, improve lateral profile his face become more balanced and harmonized. Facial bone contouring surgery can achieve cosmetic uh, improvement when the facial bone feature is within normal range. However, in cases where the bone structure and maxillomandibular complex is not typical, the satisfaction with the result might be remedied. The scope of application for uh, osteoclastic surgery should be expanded beyond individuals with whose facial feature and maximum complex position is not ideal. Whether to apply contouring surgery alone or osteoclastic surgery should be determined by identifying object indication and uh, making an accurate diagnosis. The last uh, possible cause is soft tissue burden and changes after surgery. Soft tissue problems uh, could reveal after surgery, such as cheek drooping and inverted omega-shaped deformity, 
uh, often occur due to reduced bony volume and support. And also soft tissue contributions as abundance of tissue and sagging can diminish the effect of surgery result. Thus, um, correction for the soft tissue deformity can improve patient satisfaction. Inverted omega shape deformity is a characteristic of tissue changes after contouring surgery, which are pre-jowl and lateral cheek hollowness, along with cheek drooping and jowl sagging. Uh, these changes progress in a pattern similar to aging progress. Therefore, this deformity might get worse if there has uh, age-related predisposing factors. There are the typical soft tissue problems after bone surgery. Soft tissue problems such as cheek drooping, uh, jaw sagging, chin tosses, and depression at the genial mandibular junction can occur due to uh, reduced bony volume and soft tissue sagging, which might cause dissatisfaction of surgery. If there has a predisposing factor of sagging, like aging patient, uh, loosened skin elasticity, cheek drooping, then following soft tissue management should be considered and announced to patient before surgery. Let's look at the details. Uh, cheek drooping is one of the common complications after malaplasty. It can caused by uh, inferior medially malposition of the malar complex or excessively wide dissection and overcorrection were performed. Clinically, we should consider not only bone reduction, but also soft tissue movement. Therefore, superior repositioning and prevent overcorrection should be considered when performing malaplasty. It can cause by inferior medially malposition of the malar complex or excessively wide dissection and overcorrection were performed. This patient performed bone contouring surgery without considering patient characteristics and soft tissue movement. So mela and mandible was overcorrected and needed revision and surgery. The patient characteristics is not Asian, but Western, who has narrow divergence and width of the face. Therefore, ostectomy, setback, and inferior medial positioning of the mela complex uh, resulted in cheek drooping and shows unnatural aging appearance. In the revision surgery, she was performed superiorly repositioning of a complex and restored setback procedure to recover the other cheek and optal limb volume. Finally, melavis was recovered and gained a natural OZ curve line, which is more useful and attractive appearance. Uh, this patient's initial surgery did not involve uh, plate fixation, resulting in wide, widening bone gap and rather a part of cheekbone was not moved inward and fixed, contributing to the ongoing perception of, of still wide cheekbones and cheek drooping. The second surgery aimed to further narrowing cheekbones by additional osteotomy and uh, repositioning upward, upward while fixing them. After surgery, the bone were formed secured without any gaps and by pushing in it for the reduction of cheekbone was achieved. In complex cheekbone revision surgeries, especially when um, dealing with severe non-union over 10 millimeter or significant mid-face sagging and cannot, and cannot access through intraoral incision, the bicoronal approach offers advantage in providing a more assured and precise of superior medial repositioning and fixation. The cause of pre sulcus deepening uh, include excessive narrowing or advancement of anterior chin, resulting in decreased volume in parasympathesis area. Consequently, uh, this leads to the anterior medial reattachment and upward shortening of depressed angular oris and depressed rabid imperious muscle. When the bony volume along the lateral cheek, uh, lateral border decreased during narrowing or advancement, it reduced the area of the 
we attachment of DAO and DLI muscles, resulting in their shortening, which shows preserve sucrose deepening. When the chin is small and there's inception lateral chin volume, excessive or narrow advancement can result in a step of deformity in the lateral chin. Moreover, excessive advancement can deepen the labial mental fold. Hence, considering the width and the size of the chin, careful consideration should be given to advancement procedure. Palpable stepped contour and depressed area at junior mandible junction is frequently related to inappropriate junior plus technique and following soft tissue contour deformity. Excessive resection of the uh, mandible angle can lead to lateral cheek hollowness and a shift of lateral cheek volume toward upper anterior, anterior due to shortening of the masseter muscle. These above factors exacerbate jaw sagging, uh, directly causing lesions of the mandibular septum and a loss of volume in the mandible body. Consequently, the fat in the inferior jaw compartment lesions. Uh, in aging, jaw sagging is pre, uh, primarily caused by laxity in the mandibular mandibular septum and the lesions of jaw fat. However, post-contouring surgery, jowl sagging occurred due to the lesions of the mandibular septum and loss of body volume, bony volume and soft tissue tosis. These causes can result in an um, increased shifting of soft tissue volume toward the jowl area, leading to bulging. If the notable depression at the junior mandibular junction shows up, Multiple stage fat injection might be helped to supplement the depressed volume. Mild sagging and jawline control irregularity can be improved by uh, combining liposuction and lifting procedure. Factors to consider before surgery include the individual's age, skin elasticity, degree of sagging, soft tissue volume, size of mandible, and extent of uh, retrosion. In such cases, excessive bony bone remover might uh, exaggerate the sagging instead. This patient had abundant soft tissue volume and laxity to jawline and submental area. She wanted to correct mild chin deviation and protrusion as well as slimmer feature. Her mandible volume was not as big, but mainly soft tissue volume. I recommended life suction, but she wanted bone surgery only. She had bone surgery and her deviated chin and protrusion was improved as well as her mandible was reduced. However, uh, she visited the hospital one month after surgery and complained that uh, there was not a big difference before and after surgery. Um, there still was swelling on her face. Fortunately, uh, she confessed to me that she ate better after surgery and she didn't go on a diet. But uh, maybe soft tissue management is like suction would be needed. A 42 years old female patient, the patient wanted to reduce the bone contour as much as possible. Uh, she has predisposing factor of sagging, which is age, loose elasticity, uh, cheek drooping, and jowl and pre jowl depression is already shown before surgery. Thus, correction for the soft tissue sagging after surgery might be needed. She had malar and mandible reduction with narrowing and advancement genioplasty. This is after one month's photo. Uh, Prejal sulcus and jaw sagging and bulging aggravated after surgery. This is three months after surgery. Uh, she wanted to define jawline and smooth contour without sagging. Accordingly, she had a uh, facelift to correct soft tissue deformity. In this case, before surgery, she, uh, we should give a patient a notice about the possible expected degree and cause of sagging before surgery. It is better to inform the patient that lifting and soft tissue management should be needed because uh, most patients don't consider an imaging of sagging and just expecting a smooth and lifted jawline after bone contouring surgery. Otherwise, it might be cause dissatisfaction of the patient after surgery. 
This is the treatment algorithm of the Asian facial surgery, which from new edition of uh, Nelligan, the chapter Asian facial surgery from uh, Professor Zhou Choi. Assessing uh, the facial bone based on three dimensional plane and following the algorithm for surgery is critical. Additionally, uh, considering soft tissue contribution and reflection before and after surgery and managing is also appear to be important. In my practice, I perform bone contouring surgery and often uh, soft tissue contouring surgery simultaneous, simultaneously together, which include fat manipulation using liposuction, bucapel remover, and volume suspension using uh, fat injection, lifting procedure using multiple, multiple threads or various uh, face lifting, and skin rejuvenation tightening using RFR high equipment. Um, video thread or skin botox. In soft tissue contouring, effectively manipulating and handling fat tissue, which occupy a significant volume in soft tissue, play a crucial role. This involves uh, liposuction of excessive superficial fat compartment, smoothing the contour of the jawline and submental length line. Additionally, remove the bucal fat also be considered in using RF energy and can induce lipolysis in dermal adipose tissue. Structural augmentation with fat grafting involves a concept of volume suspension and resulting soft tissue management due to the deflation of adipose tissue and bony volume during the aging process. There is a result on shifting and sagging of the soft tissue. This phenomenon occurs similarly even after bone surgery. Regional sucrose deepening and downward shifting of jaw fat occur following the loss of lateral chin volume. Injecting fat into this area can help uh, soften the contour. Removing excess fat from certain area and transplanting fat to different area is the most critical step in soft tissue contouring. The next step involves lifting procedures that address sagging and drooping soft tissue by tightening and elevating. There are various types of thread lifting and can be related uh, straightforward. Um, while this, this may not offer long lasting or dramatic effect, they can help hold and maintain soft tissue, thereby improving patient satisfaction. After contouring surgery, depending on the extent of sagging, uh, it's possible to perform partial lifting or somewhat lift simplified method. The next uh, is non-surgical skin treatment also have a rejuvenation and tightening effect, um, especially skin texture and tone and elasticity. Uh, each works in slightly different ways to indication for use. For example, RF energy due to its limitation depth. So is often used for younger individuals aiming to address all the signs of sagging and skin tightening. RF micro needle can directly penetrate and reach deeper dermis to enhance the result and um, ultrasound sound energy reaching deeper skin tissue to smart layer and often yield more notable lifting procedure. Um, this process um, with numerous RF and high energy device on the market, uh, recently the both energy device have been combined and applied differently based on skin condition and area, yielding a synergy effect. Therefore, by managing soft tissue, both uh, before and after surgery using this method, I believe we can enhance uh, not only the overall surgical outcomes, but also can improve patient satisfaction. The conclusion, the facial contouring surgery requires uh, consideration of overall facial harmony proportion and sub-tissue leading to an appropriate surgical plan. Considering sub-tissue contribution and reflection of surgery and managing it is also appear to be important for patient satisfaction. Therefore, uh, aesthetic facial contouring surgery, a broad approach should include uh, sub-tissue contouring surgery. And thank you for your attention and these are our active members of Korean Academic Association of Maxillofacial and Facial Contouring Surgery, and I'm the General Secretary of this society. We are always open to sharing knowledge and engaging in 
communication with dear friends. Whenever there's opportunity to visit Korea or participate in conference to share insight, feel free to contact us. We would be delighted to extend the invitation and welcome to you. Uh, thank you for enduring a long and perhaps tedious presentation. Thank you for ICC Web Seminar too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jong, for the uh, brilliant lecture on um, facial bone and soft tissue procedures. So now without further ado, I'd like to invite our panelists for some comments. So first I'd like to invite Dr. Hattori. Dr. Hattori, would you like to um, give some comments? Yes. Thank you for your comprehensive lecture, Professor John. I strongly agree with your opinion that you need to take balance between the hard tissue and soft tissue. And I have two questions for you. One question is, you mentioned about the uh, setback genioplasty for a patient with highly projected chin. So actually, how much can you set back the soft tissue pogonion at the maximum? And when the patient needs more setback, what would you do? And okay, the yeah. other question. Okay, and the okay, other. Okay, I, I, mm. okay I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the please answer first. Uh, I, yes, I think the setback junior please plasty has a limited indication because if the setback amount is uh, more than three for five millimeters, then it can make a uh, chin tosis or make a soft tissue problem and. It has a not effective procedure, I think. So, mm. in case of the soft tissue volume is may uh, limit, uh, soft tissue volume is thin, and uh, there has a not many prognosis. They just uh, I usually do uh, two millimeters only, and not more mm -hmm. than uh, three or four five millimeters. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And mm -hmm. second question is. Uh, you mentioned about the post-operative soft tissue management. So when is the best timing to do the surgical treatment? And when is the best timing to start the non-surgical treatment? Okay, thank you. Okay, I usually do a soft tissue uh, management with surgery, like a liposuction or um, fat injection. But you mean the non-surgical treatment, the laser therapy, I usually do after uh, one month later of surgery. Uh, in my clinic, uh, I do the post-op care service. So I do the RF energy or um, hyper energy to um, make the more smoother and <laughs> lifted the skin. So, and, and other procedures that face lift, uh, I use the minimal face, uh, limited face lift, usually do together, like a third lift or temp lift or platinum plasty or some temp plasty. But in case of the full face, classical facial and the uh, face lift, I usually do after three months later, the mm -hmm. swelling is subsided. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Hattori. Next, I'd like to invite Dr. Yang Yang for some comments. Uh, Professor Zhang, uh, thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Um, uh, I uh, work in the US. We I don't do too much facial uh, bone contouring for uh, aesthetic purpose, but I do quite a few uh, gender affirmation uh, facial bone contouring. So uh, I, I guess, I have a couple, you know, uh, questions or, or comments. Um, do you, when you design your, uh, when, when you do your pre-op planning for for the, uh, for example, the angle uh, reduction or the uh, chin uh, genoplasty, do you do three D simulation software and cutting guides? Uh, because you know sometimes that may eliminate, you know, the uh, lo lower the risk of um, asymmetry. Um, also, um, my other question is, um, a lot of, like, when I, when I talk to my patients, um, I would tell them that, you know, um, uh, excess, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, angle reduction may, um, 
result in uh, soft tissue sagging, and that may uh, the, the the patient may may not want to proceed with the surgery, you know, if they know the risk. So, does that does it mean that you know people who need soft tissue management after the facial bone contouring surgery are not the best candidates for the facial bone contouring surgery in the first place? Now, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah. The first, the uh, first question, the three D cutting guide. Yes, I think it's the um useful for the difficult cases, and you can use this for the precise surgical plan. You can make a precise plan, and you can do precise surgical uh, outcomes. But uh, there has a uh, many limitations uh, in uh, in the field because the, it takes time time to make a surgical guide and we have to send them to the uh, company and we have to take that back but we don't have time and uh, actually when I was a, a junior uh, I want to use that uh, 3D printed guide and so make a surgical plan and um, precise surgical outcomes but uh, nowadays, um, we usually we, we are not. Uh, I uh, I think it's a very useful tool, but um, we don't usually use this in in our practice because it takes time and it took a more cost. So um, maybe we can use for the difficult ca cases, and mm -hmm. I usually use the guide in the three uh, D printed. Uh, reconstruction cases of, of the uh, angle. So in that case, it's a very useful. And it's a, I think it's a good tool for us. And the next question is, uh, can you tell me the one more the next question? I guess it's it's more like a a, 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 tr a treatment philosophy, right? If if someone would need a soft tissue management for for so sagging after surgery after the bony surgery. Does that mean they are not really a good candidate for the bony surgery in the first place? Or maybe uh, the, the bony surgery is too aggressive in the first place? Like, you know, what, what are your feelings on that? Yes, the, there has a many patients, they want surgery, but they are not good indicated in the uh, outcomes. But, uh, but we sometimes we have to do surgery for them. <laughs> Uh, there are many cases. Uh, there is a uh, abundance of the fat tissue. Then I recommend continuing surgery with fat uh, remover and the sagging tissue, like a uh, aged person, uh, but they want to surgery. Then we recommend the uh, result of the. Uh, we recommend the lifting surgery, but we know that uh, that is not if the there's a they are not good indication that the result is not as good as good indicator. So, mm -hmm. so in, at first, uh, I, uh, I actually tell them that there is a, a very limited result. And, but if they want surgery, then I do surgery or contouring. And after that, I manage the skin sagging and lifting surgery together later. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so next, I'd like to invite Professor Lowe for questions and comments. Uh, hi, Dr. Jong. It's uh, very nice to listen to your talk. And uh, your result is, is quite nice. And uh, I'm happy that you also cover the soft tissue part and in quite extensive coverage of the facial contouring surgery. And I believe in the audience, uh, they, many of them are doing or wish to do uh, facial contouring surgery and, and this lecture should surely provide uh, uh, quite a lot of information for them. Now, I do have some comment or some maybe discussion, uh, not really question that I would like to provide uh, additional information uh, in this uh, field of facial contouring surgery. Number one, do you do uh, angle splitting osteotomy? 
Angle splitting osteotomy. Angle splitting osteotomy. Just remove the out outer side. Ah yes. Uh, I uh in if the the lateral uh cortex volume is very uh excessive, then I do the uh lateral bone cortectomy. And if there is a minimal uh contour irregularity and lateral volume, then I usually do a bar to remove them. Mm. Yeah, I, I think uh, when patients have a uh, quite uh, high gonial angle or large gonial angle, when uh, angle uh, resection is uh, just limited part for angle resection, then we may consider to do angle splitting, just like a, a set of split to remove the outer part. Certainly, that have to uh, consider the inferior alveolar nerve inside the bone. So this is my first comment. The second comment is the uh, regarding to patient uh, expectation. Okay, Some patients may have very uh, high expectation or unrealistic expectation. Uh, so during the preoperative consultation, how do you manage uh, this kind of uh, patient expectation? Yes, it is a uh, very uh, hard hard to uh, yes, patient satisfaction is very um is I think the that is a um the face the patient satisfaction is hard to make them uh, happy I think <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's up to patient it's up to patient uh in case I I think I did very good surgery for her but. She didn't satisfy. So I a uh, few years ago, I I think why? Why? So I found that there is an indication of surgery and the bone surgery and the soft tissue management can improve their their satisfaction. But when the patient mm. like uh, uh they want high expectation, then uh I say I honestly tell them to there is a limitation. The surgery is, is not, <laughs> not can do you yeah. know, uh, like a Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is very correct that we need to lower the patient's satisfaction. But that may end up patient go out to leave to seek for another surgeon. But I think that's that's fine. But just uh, we need to really uh, give them correct uh, re real uh, expectation uh, before the surgery. Now, uh the the number three common is uh, uh regarding the uh, genioplasty because you talk talk a lot of genioplasty and i believe that you routinely do pumping ct before the surgery uh, we know that the uh, inferior alveolar nerve when they go inside the bone uh in the chin area they 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 lower they go at the lower level uh, below the uh, the mental foramen and anterior and then go up, right? So do you pay attention to the uh, the inferior alveolar nerve in the gin, uh, in the chin area because when you plan the genioplasty cut, you you must uh, do the uh, osteotomy lower than the, the inferior alveolar nerve in the chin area. Do you uh, do you do uh, quantitative measurement before the surgery? Yes, uh, that is the most important uh, thing when we when I perform the plant the junior plastic. Uh, in many cases, there the inferior upper canal is not just uh, straight and lower to and go up. So I have to closely uh, check before surgery in the CTs. And um, I do, uh, when I perform T osteotomy, I usually do that to straight, a little bit make an angle to just below the nerve canal. So if the nerve mm -hmm. canal is too low, then I uh, do the extend, extended uh, low curved osteotomy to not uh, make a, a T osteotomy line. So uh, that is a very important uh, factor that to, before surgery I have to consider. So uh, yes, yes, there's a, when the performance is sometimes there is a little 
I I can open the uh, Imperial Alveolar Kennel, but uh, sometimes nerve not on deficiency, but normally sometimes they occur. But uh, I usually uh, check the nerve kennel and just below the I you try to do the just below the kennel to certain line. So not many cases in this time. Yeah, yeah because uh. Uh, when I do uh, also Nazi surgery, okay, uh, we routinely measure uh, the lower part of the inferior alveolar nerve below the cornea, a bit below the foramen, the mental foramen. So we, we have the number of uh, the lower border of the nerve and uh, below the uh, the mental foramen. So that, that allow you to, you know, accurately and safely uh, design the osteotomy line. I think uh, since you have compensity, I think uh, you can easily use some kind of software to uh, to do that, uh, the nerve measurement. I think that that would be safer because uh, I, nowadays we do, uh, I agree with you that the chin is very important part in the facial appearance. Okay, we do other part, but if we uh, uh, up, uh, overlook uh, the, the chin part, that would be, uh, a, a mistake. So I think uh, genealogy is very important. And I'm happy to see that you have very uh, different kind of design for your uh, genealogy. Now, the last comment is the patient satisfaction uh, rate uh, or questionnaire after the surgery. Uh, I think uh, many years ago, I think 13 years ago, I, uh, I reported uh, uh, the patient satisfaction rate from the questionnaire. Uh, that those group of cases uh, uh, were done maybe 20 years ago. And at that time, patient satisfaction rate is usually very high. Uh, so I, I'm not sure uh, if you uh, look at your patient satisfaction, uh, because nowadays I feel that more and more patients are more, becoming more and more critical. Right, because of the social media, they uh they tend to be unhappy in the smaller parts. And I feel I can feel the angle here. You know how how long should I wait to 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 have a smooth uh appearance here? Uh, although uh, by appearance it is smooth, but if you use your finger to to touch the the bone here, you you can uh, sometimes you can feel the gap or step there. So. So nowadays, how do you, uh, when in your patient group, uh, 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 do they uh, always feel satisfied after the surgery or uh, you have any idea uh, how many, uh, what percentage of patient may complain after the surgery? Yes, that's an important question, I think. The patient, uh, patient uh, satisfa satisfaction is very important for us because uh, uh, I don't have a questionnaire and I didn't make a uh, rate to, to their and I, I, I couldn't ask what uh, I think the their satisfaction the the I think bone surgery uh, among the sur uh, other surgery the facial bone contouring surgery can make them a higher uh, satisfaction than other surgery because they change a lot. But in short period of in about one month, they have a swelling and breeze and hardness and maybe a little bit of palpable area hardening and a little numbness. Then they complain also. Uh, so we in like uh, I think the facial bone contour surgery with the post op care and uh, following is important. So in our practice, uh, so we call them every month and do. Uh, facial massage and if they complain and I do the uh, laser and a little bit de swelling injection and, and then <laughs> after one month later and the swelling gone and they their uh, satisfaction goes up and they like us so uh, I handle like this then if the I think there is not many uh big issue like uh, no problems or like a uh, uh, contour irregularity is a so if the problem is uh, critical, then we have to handle this in order period, but uh, like a small complaint, then they, they 
um, mainly the disappearance by the time about one to three months later the, the swelling subsides and they I think the facial contour surgery is one of the uh, surgery that <clears throat> the satisfaction is high. Mm, thank you. Oh, oh, uh, I, I do have one more comment that uh, because uh, talk about the the uh, the chin setback, uh, the genoplasty and setback. And uh, for some of the patients, uh, they may have very flat occlusal plane, okay? Very horizontal occlusal plane, a very acute uh, gonia angle. And, and, and for that kind of cases, sometimes uh, you may consider to do uh, uh, maxillomandibular osteotomy. That means that also Nazi surgery, maintain the occlusion and do some pitch rotation, clockwise pitch rotation to rotate the mandible uh, and chin uh, backward and upward. So so that may also solve the problem. Maybe uh, it's also a very important uh, solution for patient uh, in this category. Yes, I agree also. Yeah, thank you for the, your comment. And I think if the occlusion state is normal, is normal, but the occlusion plane is so flat, in case uh, that the facial control surgery is not effective, so they need a clockwise rotation, would be the powerful uh, change in their facial profile. I sometimes feel like that uh, setback genoplasty is not effective in most of patients. In some patients, it's effective with so setback genoplasty. So I use the setback genoplasty limited case. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your comment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Uh, you you did a very nice job tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Lowe, for your comments. Next, I'd like to move on to our Q&A session. So the first question is from Dr. Ho Glian, and Dr. Ho Glian would like um, you to further expand on how to prevent the soft tissue sagging after genioplasty. Uh, yes, the soft tissue sagging after uh, genioplasty. There is a uh, lot uh, you mean the subsidy sagging means the uh, reduction, uh, vertical reduction or setback genoplasty can make a soft tissue sagging the some entire area chintosis. So uh, I uh, do uh, the procedure with the, uh, the periosteum and the plastic muscle to pull up and uh, make a drill hole in the edge of the bone and reattach them. And, the mentalist muscle to repair with them. So it can um, prevent the subsidy sagging, but uh, many uh, a lot of reduction cannot uh, prevent it. So if in the case, in that case, another soft tissue management is needed. And for the fixation, do you use, uh, what type of sutures do you use? Yes, I use the, uh, I think I use the nylon, non-observable sutures to the periosteum and attach the drill hole and tie, tie to the uh, the area. Uh, would four, and four also, nylon be adequate? Pardon? Uh, would 40 nylon be ad adequate? Uh, yes, yes, 40 nylon. And when I perform the uh, T ostectomy, the central segment, I we remove the central segment segment when we perform T ostectomy. Then uh, if the uh, F be behind the bone segment, there is attached the genio hyoid and glossus muscle in there. So I uh, attach the the muscle and pull that to the plate fixation alone. Then it can I think it can prevent the uh, sagging um, also. Okay, thank you. And our next question is from Dr. Honda. And the question is, during the pre-op uh, consultation, do you use simulation software or photos to explain the estimated um, outcome for the patients? Yes, uh, simulation software is uh, quite important for patient to uh, ex uh, think the expectation of the after surgery. But when I perform the two-jaw surgery, I usually do simulation software uh, the merging with the X-ray and CT scan, but in facial contour surgery, we I don't use uh, simulation software routinely. 
And the photograph, the simulation is a, a not an actual uh, actual the changes. It's a, just a Photoshop, so I don't use that usually. Okay. Uh, thank you. And actually, I have a question for you. And my question is, um, for your um surgeries, do you use um resorb um absorbable plates and screws? And what's your opinion of them? Uh, yes, a few years ago, the absorbable plate is uh used in our in Korea also. They they uh the company they. Give us the absorber plate and some advertisement is absorber plate is good, but I don't think it's a useful method. It's so weak and um, it can uh, it, it cannot uh, hold the bone tightly. And the screw is the problem also. The screw, if I do the screw and then screw the head is go off, then I have to more uh, additional hole, then the hole is widening. So. Uh, it, I don't think it's uh, useful for us to, because we need a tight fixation. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, I think um, Pang Yun has some questions for you as well. So I'll let him ask him uh, ask you. Yeah, thank you, Junior. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you for your very great and uh, comprehensive, very detailed uh, presentation. Uh, we did learn a lot from you. Actually, I have two questions for you. One is for Mala, one is for Angle. Uh, do you have uh, the scenario the patient received uh, angular reduction already and uh, finally probably two or three years later, patient want to restore the angle a little bit back. So compared to the angle reduction surgery, do you have a cases and come back for the angle augmentation surgery. And what is your material for those a patient the one augmentation and you want to see uh, the bone cement or you have any the P P M L A or what kind of else the material you use for the, the angle augmentation surgery? Yeah, I want need your opinion. Thank you. Yes, uh, there are many materials like silicone and PMA and titanium and the there is a company. Uh, they they do make a uh, 3D like a pretty 3D printing guide. Like they make a uh, bones to simulation, and I put the implant there and the fixation. I put I uh, gave them the fixation point, and I we make the uh, 3D implant. The I we we make the 3D reconstruction implant for the angle reduction patient. Uh, so I usually use before such so before three years ago I used the silicone for reconstruction, but it is not it is a little bit not hard. So uh, when I put the silicone there, and I think that uh, that little bit move to not uh, the fixation is not accurately. So in these days I usually use the titanium uh, reconstruction uh, 3D implant. Uh, uh, materials and uh, we order the the design and we order them the, the fixation point and they make the um, titanium pl titanium 3D reconstruction plate and 3D reconstruction uh, implant for us. Okay, thank you, John. And the second question is that you have shown one cases that is the do patient receive the mala reduction without any fixation. However, a patient showed the dehiscence of bone, uh, probably one centimeter away from the original bone area. And I think that bone quite, quite is a kind of a, a vascular, probably is a bone grab and uh, afterward probably is a kind of a vascular resorption. And uh, you mentioned about you using the bicoronal incision to approach and to do uh, once again of OIF. So uh, I would like to ask him, what is your bicoronal incision to approach over the area and how to fix over that? Because you, you told us it from original, the upper gingiva incision is very limited, uh, the, ver the vision for you to approach, right? So what is your method to do that kind of a complication? Thank you. Yes, sir. The non-fixation method is uh, over few years ago, the, uh, in many Korean 
doctor, some foreign doctor do the non-fixation method, just put the lateral side cheekbone. Mm -hmm. There is a many problem because the uh, the osteoarthritis line is uh, behind the, the 45 angle venous there, then we cannot approach into the in, uh, intraoral approach. So in many cases, the the they, as we mentioned, that there has a avascular necrosis, a, a bone absorption also, and has a drooping and sagging. Uh, in that case, we do the bicolor incision. The, there is a, a, a detailed surgical method and procedure. That, this is the uh, what my uh, professor do. The roaming pack has a that he has a journal and he do the bicolor incision and do the procedure with lifting. So, uh, in, most of the cheek droop, uh, the bone drooping patient has a cheek drooping also. So we can correct with the bicolor incision to approach the mela and other octal limb and uh, fixation to lift it up and to the fixation to the uh, real the orbital limb portion. Uh, there is a, a, a journal and there's a detailed surgical uh, announcements in there. So. We uh, I um, uh, you can see the the detail of in that journal maybe, mm. and yeah, mm. yeah. Please go ahead, John. Mm -hmm. Ah yes, yes, yes. yes. yes by coronal incision, we usually do the forehead reduction, like a forehead reduction surgery, forehead lift surgery. Uh, it's a similar pattern. The the dissection plan the is um a little bit ship um shifted to the uh, lateral limb portion to be there so it is not a complex method so uh, you can do if you do if you have an experience of for reduction then you can uh, do the uh bicolor incision to make the cheekbone to lift up there okay thank you very much uh, Dr. John, the, the question is because recently I have a one case that has a similar scenario too. But oh, however, okay, here the patient already received the ORI, but however, the, the plate and the screw dislodge and the loosening, so leave a probably one centimeter away from the original attached area and already five months away. So I am considering doing a bicoronary incision to restore that bone, come back to the original site and do again the re-OIF again. So actually this is re really very tough and a very complicated cases too. Yeah, because the patient show the sucking, the facial, the soft tissue and asymmetry of a bilateral um, imbalance. Okay, thank you. So yeah, I, I think Today, we really learned a lot and a lot uh, from uh, Dr. Jun Wu John. And uh, I, because the time is limited, I do not really want to talk too much. And uh, I would like to invite all our participants in front of the computer can turn off your screen and uh, hope you can show you a beautiful smile with us. And a special thank you, uh, of course, our presenter, Professor John, and uh, one panelist from New York, that is the Dr. Alan Yan. Thank you, Alan. And we have another one is from Japan, Tokyo, from Dr. Yoshi. Thank you, Yoshi. And uh, okay, I I see the Dr. E.K., Dr. Nobu, Dr. Nguyen, Dr. Isara. And I will count to three, and uh, please give me your very, very beautiful smile. Thank you. I saw. Nice to see you. Okay. One, two, cheese. Thank you, Honda. And by the way, because the, the Chang'an Forum 2023 just finished it, and uh, Professor Lo told me we had to head in on the next coming Chang'an Forum again. So uh, we have to announce and advertise again our coming the Chang'an Forum in 2024. That conference will be located on the October 28, 29, and the 30. And that is the both issue focusing on clap surgery and orthodontic surgery too. 
of course, always uh, looking forward to your calm participation. And our next uh, ICC webinar will be the coming year. That means that we have to keep silence to celebrate December in the rest, the remaining days. So we have to say Merry Christmas in advance and Happy New Year in advance. And our next presenter will be our very lovely Professor Fayas. And uh, he will give us a very special talk on difficult repair for clear palate. The date is the January 7th. And uh, thank you for all your participation today. See, and I have to say thank you and uh, good morning and uh, good evening and have a good day and have a good night. Thank you, Professor John. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Wow, you show us a so difficult, complicated junior prostate a lot. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Professor Saul. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Saul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. See you. See you. Yeah. And a good luck for the DL plastic surgery clinic in Seoul. Yeah. And hope okay. to visit, visit your clinic in one day. Okay. Well, you I should will let visit. you know when I will be I'll be there with you. Yeah, soon. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. Bye -bye. Okay. Have a good night. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye. -bye.